right, audience, good evening. I am your host, Kyron Tio, and I'd like to welcome you all to the third season of We Comedy Jam. Give it up, thank you all for coming out, yeah, yeah. So we did this twice before, and we're doing it again. We wanna big up all the comedians coming out today. We wanna thank Cafe Blues for having us here giving these guys a spot to come out and show off their talent. So, we happy to be outside. Anybody here outside for the first time? Serious? For first time? Talk. All right, get them around the applause now. Get them around the applause. Yeah. We're coming back out, we're coming back out. Yeah. But we want to bring on the first guy. His name is Kylie. Yes. Kylie, say to tell all you, he's sorry from now, right? He asked me to tell you all that he's sorry. But I want you all to make a big round of applause for Kylie. Come on up, Kylie. Yeah, man. Hi. I was really surprised when Abu Bakr passed away. I was like, because I never really thought about his age before it happened. To me, he was just like always doing things, but apparently like in the original 1990 coup, he was 50 years old, which I mean, I mean, it's never too late to follow your dreams, I guess. <laughs> but he was just like, to me, he was always just doing things. He was always like active in his community. He still had like this public eye about him. Um, you remember when he didn't like the lockdown restrictions and he, he was talking about it and you, you remember what he said? He was like, what did he say? Well, he was like, this is my final warning and I leave it in God's hands. And the whole nation went, burr? <laughs> what? Mind you, this is like year two of our Lord and Savior, COVID, whatever, right? So I mean, I guess anything was possible, but it's not the time. This is not the time. I was really frustrated, a little bit. But then I remembered the two. I know some people would have won that back now to go on, you know, because some people was like, you know, Christmas was around the corner. Do I put the down payment on the fridge now? Or do I, do I wait for the looting? <laughs> Even me, I was like, I, I, all of a sudden, I wanted to like have a flat screen TV, the one that was connected to the internet. I never had one of those before. And I wanted, because I was in a looting mood. And, and I know I, I didn't want an actual coup to happen. It didn't have to be like a big coup. It could have been like a small coup, a mini coup, a cuckoo, if you will. Just like. We would have all had our masks. We would have had like temperature guns. It would have been totally safe. We would have been social distance. It would have been fine. Yes, but that didn't happen. Sorry. Rest is rest is soul. Um, yeah. If there's one thing, if there's one thing I want you all to know about me is like I just real drink. I just real drink. I mean, but I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. You're only an alcoholic if you buy your own drinks. If you buy your own drinks, right? Because if you're buying your own you know, you're, you're spending your own money, you're making bad choices, you know, you're a bad person, whatever. But if somebody else buys you those drinks, then you, you can't refuse. You can't refuse. Absolutely not, no. I, I did grow up poor. Um, and they say growing up poor makes you humble. No, it doesn't. It just means you can't do fun things like drugs and boat rides. Like, no, it's just, and I'm the worst kind of poor now. I'm like a struggling artist poor, because like, I'm not only like a comedian, right? I'm also a musician. I'm a musician, so I tell people, you either get written into a joke or a song. And like, I tell my boyfriend, if he ever tries to leave me, he gets written into a joke or a song. Or both, if he's lucky. This is a little, this is for you, wherever you are right now, because he, he didn't make it tonight. Um. How could you leave me when your forehead's so big? I'll tell everybody that you're dyslexic. 
Your face is so dumb. I think those organs But maybe not all of them. Why did you leave me? You can find me on iTunes. I was in the newspaper, right? Because I was holding up this, this sign that said, um, nobody knows I'm gay. Nobody knows I'm gay. I, think they, I thought it was funny. I thought it was a funny sign. She did not think it was funny. She did not, she didn't find it hilarious one bit. She, she got home, when I got home, apparently she was angry, she was upset. She was like, what do you mean I never knew? Of course I knew, of course I knew you were gay. You're my son, I, I, I'm your mother, I know everything about you, I love you. Now get the hell out of my house because we don't do that here. And that was the last time I saw her. Okay, okay, I know. I know, Trinidad, I know people like to think that Trinidad is this intolerable, dangerous wasteland for people like me. No, no it's not. It's not actually. T Tobago, yes, maybe. They, maybe. But not Trinidad. Not Trinidad. No. Not Trinidad. Um, I actually learned the hard way that Trinidad is actually way more progressive than we give them, we give us credit for. Just the other day I was by the taxi stand you know, sun shining, bright, whatever, I'm living my life. And I was sexually harassed by a taxi driver. A man in broad daylight. Oh my God, guys, progress. <laughs> a historic moment. And maybe he thought, okay, maybe he thought I was a girl and that was like the end of it. That was the whole joke. Like, oh, he thought I was a girl. No, no. no. He, he knew who I was. There's, there's no punchline. He knew who I was. He was very secure in his truth, and that kind, I kind of admired that. He was, um, according to him, it don't matter sex and gender once sex is the agenda. And I was just like, see, this should have been the sign that I was holding when I was at that pride parade many years ago. Maybe my mother would have found my life choices a little more humorous. You know, could you imagine? I was taken aback. I was like, oh my God. So I left the sugar on the support of Spain taxi stand. Because that's, that's where it has always been. And uh, yeah, I, I, I thought to myself, I did what anybody who's been, who've been like sexually harassed, I did what anybody would do after they've been sexually harassed. I thought to myself, what could I have done to prevent something like this? You know, as you do. Yeah. And then I, I thought to myself, um, you know, it, it was a little strange. He, he was probably a little strange in the beginning because like, um, when I was heading to the stand, he called out, he was like, a red man. So f he's colorist, which is boo, that's not a good thing, boo. Don't call me red man, I'm not red. And secondly, he was like, yeah, red man, one to go. And then I got into his car and I sat down and I was the only one there. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? First of all, this relationship can't get anywhere if you're lying to me. A relationship is built on trust. How could you tell me there's one to go and I'm the only one there? What do you, am I the only one he ever needs? Is that what he means? Was I was thinking about it all night afterwards. Uh, one of my comedian friends, they pulled me aside. They were like, uh, they were concerned. They were like, maybe you should tone it down on the gay jokes. And they, they didn't mean it in any bad way. You could tell that they were like concerned. They, uh, you know, they didn't want me to be known as the guy who does wash people bottom. That's, it's not good for your career, apparently, whoever. They don't want me to know. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll think about it. I'll think about it, fine. I'll see what I could do, see what I could come up with. Because um, I really wanted to take their advice. So um, I thought about it, and I did the only reasonable thing I could do. I started stealing their jokes. I just started stealing their jokes because, and all of a sudden, my set has become more palatable and more relatable and more like, you know, I have a well-rounded set. That whole Abu Bakr bit in the beginning, that's not mine, I stole it. That was not, that everything. It belonged to a good friend of mine, a good, young, and upcoming comedian, Kevin Soy, he's right there. It was part of his, like, earlier set. And I was just like, I was like, let me just start stealing his jokes and then maybe I'll be more like him and then I will get like people to come. <laughs>
I would be known as the guy who does wash people's bottoms, I guess. No, 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 no. Um, if anybody has any questions, comments on concerns, I'm by the bar. <laughs> My name is Kylie, you guys were nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
All right, so I want to introduce the next comedian. Yeah. Some of you all might know him from social media. Man making nice waves, he making waves. Woo. I want you all to give it up for my boy, Shabi, AKA Kuva Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. 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 Oh, don't move that all the way before I trip on that little red laugh at man. I know I intend. <laughs> so good night, good night. How are you doing? All good? Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to be here. I'll let you know that. So a little bit about me, as you say. My name is Shay. All right. 32 years old, I personally find I feel younger. But my friends say, Dan, your faces look like 50. Organize that, please. It's like, wait, hey, boy. I'm married. Love my wife, boy. I really love my wife. I spoil her. So what's my, so all you happy about? No, no, all you see me and say, I can shoot my shot at the little rasta. You looking nice. No, no, they say that. Way, boy. Pressure. Wait, is he yes, you say that? <laughs> so yeah, but I try. Why I mention marriage is because I'm proud of it. It's something I'm proud of. Because I spoil my wife. I try to spoil her by giving, right? I like to think that I'm the giver in the relationship. So I, as giver, quality time, you know, spend time with her. I'll give her affection, she might be washing ways. I'll run up and just start to kiss you up and thing. I just get horn sometimes too, but that's just because I is a man. That is, that is what we just, do, do, uh, do. Say, wow, she didn't like that at all, but she didn't like that at all. But yeah, and fellas, a little advice. Don't set the bar too high in your marriage because it does end up in problems. So the first time my wife and I, we had the 20, the 22s are no clothes, the, the act, we did the deed. The first time we do it, I bring out all the moves, handstand, backflip, front flip, Lift up on shoulder. I move called the rocket, but I know it. You see what the rocket is. And in true female fashion, she went and tell all of her friends in great detail. But what she didn't know is that her friends started messaging me <laughs> behind her back. This one friend in particular, we will call her Keisha. Keisha messaged me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and both you and her. Me, girl, not me. I was never there. I, he looked like me, you know, but I know me. I don't even know who that girl is. I get defensive. She said, what are you talking about? Your wife tell me something. What did she tell you? Something about a rocket. <laughs> she lying, you know. I said, Keisha, you was in my wedding. You's my wife's best friend. You know I love her to bits. You know I would never be out here making her look like a liar because I, I feel as though. <laughs> so long story short, Keisha know what the rocket is. She, she, she know what the rocket is. But um, another thing about me, I'm a father, a daddy. A real proud of that. I love my child to bits. Oh my gosh. That is my little princess. But my wife does get mad. She'd be like, why are you calling your son that? Don't call your son a princess, that's your son. I'm like, but if I come home and you're watching Crime Watch and I make a little joke with him, and he laugh, ha ha! <laughs> Daddy, you relax yourself now. What do you want me, you want me to think? If it look like a duck and it walk like a duck, what it is? A duck curry it, put it in a pot. I like wow, but still, but honestly, I really have a child. It's a baby girl, five years old. Love her, like wow. I never taught her to love somebody like that. So much, in fact, that I start to I start to have new fears. One of my fears about that is that when I grow old, she put me in an old people home, and and I I am terrified. At the other day, I watched a movie, not a movie, sorry, a video 
Uncle Cecil is trying to go for a walk, right? Granted, it's 11 o'clock in the night. You have no business going for a walk. But he's trying to go for a walk. And the nurse don't know how to tell him, hey, don't do that. So the nurse instead start to put some licks on him. I swear it's like she'd fight or mortal combat or something. The nurse started to go, the nurse started to go, oh, are you good? I'm like, yo. I can't go through that a little more. And then I hear a man say, finish him. <laughs> I like, I like, nah, I can't go through that. I like, I am totally against people beating old people unless they do something real disrespectful, like curse you about your mother or or cut in front of any doubles like not me and my doubles. I'm not going through that. I don't care, Eric. I don't care if you have a walker. I will take that walker and hit you. I want my tree with slight. I'm not going through that. So I am. Um, so I just real afraid. Like I just do things with her, and I just be like, hey, she will come. She will say, hey, daddy. I say, yeah, baby girl. Could I have this cookie? I say, sure, baby girl, no problem. But this cookie is a promise that you will never put daddy in a home. <laughs> say, I know daddy, I'll, I'll never do that, I'll never do that. All right, cool, here's your cookie. The other day we're doing nursery rhymes. I say, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, you all know it. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty in an old people nursing home because, because you cannot put your daddy in that home. No, don't do it. No. But other than that, I love her so much that I try to see her financial future. And in doing so, we open a lock account for our way money for ever so often. And she... She comes and well, she don't really know what that means, but she just know when she was just sitting here, she will have some money. So for me to facilitate that, I end up getting a second job. And I can't, I'm not liberty to say where I work, because for legal purposes, but I am um, the self fried chicken. If all you're not sure, we wear red. <laughs> and I went to work at a Girl call, is the customer, your driver speaking, calling for directions. He say, yeah, dog, yeah, that's not. When you come, you're making the third sheet on your right. Say, all right, that's simple. He say, as you turn in, you'll see a big tree on your left, a big mango tree. It's not it. Now, <laughs> why it is tree people just give you the landmarks you don't need? Like, uh, is, is this? And they say, nah, not it. I say, all right, cool, it's not by the tree. He say, come lower down. On the right-hand side, you'll see a standpipe. I put on this pee on that standpipe. I say, yours is the house behind. He say, no, I mean, tell the stop there. Come lower down. I say, all right, cool. He say, after the standpipe, the, the fourth house on your left, greenhouse, black gate. I say, all right, I'm in front. You can come outside. He said, no, 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 me tell you stop there. That's just an next house on the street. I said, so what you tell me that for? I don't, why are you doing my that? I said, all right. He said, come lower down. He said, you see, a man stand up in the road, pretending like you're on the phone, waving the hand. I said, yeah, yeah, that you are right. I'm coming. He said, I know me. That's a mad man. He, he will bite you. Don't even stop by. He drive past his street. I said, oh, God, just tell me your house now. But he said, oh, God, you're almost rich. Come lower down. You see when you reach the end of the street, because it's a dead end, you will see a pink and blue house on your right, white gate, real nice house. I say, all right, your house really nice, but you see that I know my house, my house opposite is a board house. I was like, yo, so you mean to tell me, it's the last house on the left? And way, boy, you had them directions, don't pack, but you from here. <laughs> Like, yo, I say, yeah, well, yeah, just give me more money, let me go. He say, oh, God, don't be vexed with me. I, I not too long moved on here. I, I hear, yeah, how long you moved on here, right? He say, boy, I, I he started scratch here. How, how long I, how long I moved on here, right? Sometime in 2004. Like, 
That is 18 years ago. Were you serious? What going on with you? Oh gosh. That is the damn excuse. And next time, artwork. It had this one customer. He called, he ordered KFC. I mean, he ordered fried chicken. <laughs> Four days in a row. So by this, and it so happened that I delivered for him the first two days. So by the second day, he was like, hey, Ross, you're a real cool boy. I'll tell them, send you any time I order. So third day I went, fourth day now. I see the name come up, Mark. Call him, I say, hey, yo, Mark, it's Ross, boy. I'll bring anything for you. Drive straight by him. Don't need directions, they're alone. He say, um, see Mark stand up in front of the place, scratching his skin and watching him, so. Say, I pull up. Say, what going on, my Mark, boy? Him dog. I real glad to see you, boy. I say, oh, oh, what going on? You all right? Him, nah, boy, I just real what a chicken, boy. Say, all right, cool. Give me the money so I could give you the chicken and I could go my way. He said, boy, to tell you the honest truth, I don't have no money. I said, well, I can't give you no chicken. Yeah, no, no, wait, wait, wait. But he came out now, and he leaned in by my window. Put your hand here. Yeah. He said, dog, I'm willing to do anything for that chicken. <laughs> I said, brother, man, what? He said, dog, anything for that chicken. I drive off so near speed off and into the nearest dark street because I don't like to see people hungry. I say, Mark, take your chicken away. <laughs> I went back to the store. I pay, I pay, I pay for the munch pack. <laughs> it's probably the best $20 I've ever spent in my life. <laughs> my name is Shay Tanks. You wanna have a good night. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, yeah, that's it for the first episode in season three of We Comedy Jam. Now, I just want to thank Kaiso Blues, and I want you all to know that we are streaming on WESNCC.com. I want you all to make sure tune in on social media at WESNCC. I just want you all to stand up, give a wide, loud, any kind of round of applause for the talents we have today. Oleg a bald head, Oleg a rasta man, Oleg a afro. Oleg just get up and give them a round of applause now, man. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you all for showing the support. We come to the jam. Good night. <laughs>